Plot, The Man Who Laughs, 1928, written by Nick Riganus, forever disfigured by a white and mirthless grin on his face. The orphan son of a nobleman, Gwynplaine, rescues the blind baby girl, D, in cold 17th century England. Taken in by the paternal carnival philosopher, Ursus, the unloved boy grows into a kind and honest man who chosses, however, to hide his grotesque deformity behind a black cloak. Utterly convinced that the beautiful D will never truly love him because of his horrible secret. Feeling unworthy of D.A.'s noble feelings, Gwynplaine will soon cross paths with the aristocratic temptress, Duchess Georgiana, as a cruel and long-standing conspiracy in the palace of Queen Anne presents him with the burden of choice. Will poor Gwynplaine, the man who laughs, renounce everything in the name of love? Voice over off. When you're blind and watching movies, what will you find? A blind superhero whose superpowers are acting like he's not blind. A sighted actor overdramatically touching people's faces. And maybe the whole joke is that they're bumping in to different places. A spectacular. Welcome to Citizen White Cane, the podcast who laughs, cries, and talks about being blind. My name is Scum Club. I'm Melissa Bakta. And we're talking about the man who laughs. Yes, I was super excited when you picked this one because it, uh, it was your week. Yes. And I just have not watched a, a, a huge amount of silent films. Me neither. <laughs> so yeah, as, especially this one, which has uh, garnered quite the following uh after, since its release. Yes. Um, it is the inspiration for <laughs> the Joker. The, actually, I think it's because this is based on a Victor Hugo. It is. Yeah. A short story. story. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I think it's a novel. Now I'm doubting myself. I, maybe it's a short It's. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember if it was a short story or a novel, but uh, it's been adapted a few times, actually. Y- yeah. And I think... This one was one of the first movies because I know later on it's been adapted in multiple countries. I think this is the really the only one that was um, through Hollywood that was a Hollywood film Um, because there's been like other ones Mm -hmm. I think in the 60s where they adapted it in like France and Italy I believe. Can't confirm but (laughs) more more than likely. (laughs) Yeah I looked up the whole yeah it's it has been and I think it's there's been like theater stuff but it is yeah I guess from my dumb American view I'm like this is the inspiration for uh, the Joker and um, specifically like I was just like Heath Ledger like you know well i mean you, you know, look... want to know how i got these scars the whole time <laughs> i i thought of that too yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i mean you look at his face at the, at the character's face when you finally get to see it and i mean it looks very it's very joker very jokery very jack nicholson yeah i yeah. mean and the original character from the 19 19... that was introduced in the 1940 comics of the joker um was specifically based off of the portrayal um of uh Okay, so I looked up pronunciation <laughs> because you. I was like, I'm gonna die. I'm Gwenplain. Gwenplain is how I've heard it pronounced. I don't know if that's right, but that's what I'm gonna Cause, say because it, it, I can say it. And <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, and isn't and I did you see the because we watched in two different places? Did did the I think we watched the same uh, version rip. Uh, yeah. it, came, it came from the Kino. Right, TV. right, right. So I think it's probably the same. But did you hear what they have like the, um, oh, there's a specific term for it, but like when they were taking f- movies that were um, silent films and then adding on a track of like yes. non-sync sound. Oh, but Because yes. they do say his name at one point. Yes. And that's why I was, I heard them say his name and that's why I was trying to decipher it. But it's very like, it's hard. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. as you know, 
It is because it's mostly when when the sound happens uh, for people, at least it's crowd scenes. Right. Because it's like non sync sound, mm-hmm. which is I mean, I don't you couldn't really if you took a silent film, I don't think you could really do that much sync sound because they're so, not. I mean, some of it is pretty good when the shot of the bells ringing, those bells are, seem to be in time with the sound. Yeah, but not sorry. It's not sync dialogue probably not no no it didn't didn't feel like that i mean and then you have the the orchestra playing music in the in the royal court yeah that's that's synced fairly well yeah there's definitely like they have some music singing and then yeah the crowd scenes mm-hmm. as well are also like which mm-hmm. you know i mean i <laughs> i'm it's it's jarring because you you go from this crowd scene and then gwenplain and ursus have a conversation and they're just yeah, yeah moving. they're just moving their mouths. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, right. <laughs> the the main characters can't weird. talk. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I think about how like um, one of the when I taught kids, I taught like stop motion animation and it was too much work to get the kids to like actually record sound. So I would just do it after they had finished their films. I would just add in sound effects and music. And so sometimes those like those cuts are just like what I they're all the stuff I would do. Like I couldn't like record actual like lines of dialogue but I could you know do applause and I could do different music and I would sometimes like try to make it you know all the sound effects and stuff in time with their film but like I had to only use just like random things I could find online as Mm -hmm. opposed to like actually having them come in and do voices. And this was this was a thing that was happening in films because Sunrise is another film that also used uh well non-synced sound for for a major crowd scene. Yeah and this was also kind of similar to the city lights when we talked about that in our first episode oh very much so it was i for a second i I did a double take because uh, so our blind character in this is is a we meet her as a baby but she's a woman named dia (laughs) yeah she is very similar or dea but dia anyway yeah uh we meet her and yeah i i almost did a double take i'm like is it the same woman (laughs) yeah is it the same girl i think all like women just looked exactly the same in hollywood at that time (laughs) well i mean we're all just Maybe. blonde and like very Aryan. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yes, that <laughs> that's true. But like, I mean, as far as like hairstyles and everything, they looked different if you compare her to, yeah, uh, to the Duchess. Right. Well, blind people, yeah, they all had to look similar. <laughs> Wait. Well, well, no. What I mean is like hairstyle, face, like sort of. If you compare the two, compare the two, they're they're different. But they're kind of like different archetypes in a way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because Dea is a saint. Yeah, she's like a her. pure. The, well, it's like I think it's like that purity thing that's kind, you know, that is problematic of like sure, a blind yeah. woman. You know that it's like mm-hmm. she is. There's some sort of like, you know, kind of like I don't. Yeah, like uh, what is it? Oh, the you, Madonna. The yeah, the Madonna complex. Yeah, but you see her because you see her and she's only dressed in white. Yeah, and she's. I mean, it it, it felt like she had her own light. I mean, I honestly felt like at points there was a almost a spotlight really shining on her because like she's just this beacon of, of purity and and hope and you know and she loves Gwynplaine absolutely for for who he is and doesn't and doesn't care that um that he's disfigured or or like and it's kind phys- of unclear disabled, how much yeah. she's aware of this because I was just like if they have a romantic relationship like his his whole thing like the Joker um, I guess it's more like Heath Ledger specifically, <laughs> but like he is in a permanent smile. So like right. if you I mean, kiss someone, you can tell that they <laughs> have a permanent smile. On right. Face. But they, these two might not have kissed. I mean, they might've just been very, you know, it's 1928. Yeah. Well, and it takes place in the, uh, 17th century. I think? Yeah. Yeah. 16th or 17th. That, that, and the fact it's, that, I mean, Gwenplaine found Dea as a baby. You know, they're technically <laughs> adopted brother and sister, and then they grew up together, and oh, but they love each other. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it is <laughs> movie a, logic. A very weird. It, that's, it's also funny because I was thinking like the, the HBO Watchmen series has the exact same thing happens at the very beginning of it. It's like <laughs> sort of an uh, apocalyptic scenario where someone like where a little kid finds a baby and then it's like well I'm a little kid and a baby but I guess we're together now like, it's the exact same thing um but very different contextually um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah so they yeah I mean he looks pretty young so I I was yeah. like yeah it's not great but at least it could be a lot worse like it's not like he's an adult who's found a baby I or just, anything it's so interesting that that the the character of the Joker was based off of this this person because Gwenplaine 
is this fella who just wants to live his life and be left alone. He doesn't kill anybody. No, he's a very like tragic figure. Yeah, yeah. He's it's he's a very sympathetic character. The dog, his guide dog, attack dog, whatever, circus dog does more damage to somebody than he does. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> it is yeah, he really there is okay, so I haven't seen the Joaquin Phoenix one, but I've heard that there's more like that his backstory is far more similar to, I guess, the man who laughs in that it's just like what, the Joaquin Phoenix version of this movie. No, of Joker. The movie oh, the Joker. Movie. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Which he, I haven't seen it. So I'm just going off what other people. Right. Have you seen it? I have. Okay. Yeah, so I can answer any, cool. any and almost all questions <laughs> that you may have. Um, yes. So it's it's, it's similar in that um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker uh, obviously doesn't have this, this didn't have the surgery done to him to have a permanent grin but he is a clown he's he's employed right. by a clown he is definitely mentally disabled right. we we're, we're not we're not told exactly what it might be but he's yeah cuz it yeah. sounds problematic to me just from hearing people describe oh, it oh it's extremely um it is <laughs> yeah it's it is a loud bombastic movie with nothing to say <sighs> that that is that is my hot take i'm I'm not. I mean, I that I I think that's right. Even though I haven't seen it, just from all of the just very plain descriptions of it, I'm like, <laughs> okay. I it w- I would be very interested to hear what you have to think about it. But it's um, the problem is woof. I feel like I already know what I think about it, and then I feel like watching it, I'll just think the exact same thing. But I probably still need to see it because it's less valid when I, I haven't mean, seen you, it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's harder to do. You, I mean, what you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say Joaquin Phoenix's performance is trash because it wasn't. I mean, it's, I, I, it's a pretty I always amazing had a performance soft spot for but, him. And yeah. It's probably and he like. <laughs> another tragic. Oh, he, <laughs> he disappears into this role. So it's it's pretty amazing. But. But Heath Ledger yeah. is my Joker. Oh, yeah, of always. course. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, mine, mine, I, I will probably always have a, an incredibly soft spot for Mark Hamill's Joker. Because that's just who, that was the first Joker I grew up with. I was terrified of the Joker. When I was little, he was still is honestly this the scariest uh, comic book villain because you just don't know what he's just going chaos. to do and he's capable of anything. I love. I have to admit, this is I have the same problem with like um, Trump as well as as a chaotic good person. I like do still have some appreciation for chaotic evil characters because <laughs> like there's just a I'm like yeah chaos I love chaos even if I <laughs> we're playing on opposite um, teams but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I do love a good chaotic character <laughs> of any kind um uh, well but yeah fun fun fact about Conrad Veidt who is uh who portrays the man who laughs yeah I want to talk about him but what is yeah, your fun yeah. fact so I learned that uh there was a there was prosthetics used in his in his performance to you know make his that face makes sense. yeah but a lot of it also a lot of it came from him though just from from the from the actor from his performance itself yeah i mean and to talk i have like i have a story about him that i thought was really interesting oh, yes. reading wikipedia do, do <laughs> tell. <laughs> it's after it's all after this movie so it's kind of it doesn't really have anything to do with this movie but i it just made me happy so i'll i'll share a little bit so it is a german expressionist director and also um conrad veit the who plays gwynplaine um is also from germany and the director as well paul lenny yep mm-hmm. and um so <laughs> me forever bad at names um uh, so the two of them i was looking at it because this is 1928 so i was like mm-hmm. hmm, interesting time to be um a german director and i really did want to see what happened with both of them so paul lenny is jewish so he was like he just left right as the Nazis started, because he kind of had to um but i thought it was really cool that um conrad had um like was not Jewish but uh at the time was like both married to a Jewish woman I think or was I think maybe going to be married to uh like a girlfriend who was Jewish at the time but um but when asked what his race was um in Ger- by the Nazis he put down um Yuda which is Jewish wow. and German so that um and then and he uh naturalized later to Britain so that he could um like uh, escape the Nazis basically but yeah so but I thought that was really really cool that That's he amazing. put down that he was a Jewish and and mm-hmm. um and yeah and then 
and then left to go to Britain. But he could have like been because he was a pretty big star. So he definitely could have been um, a Nazi star. And there were (laughs) other um, like actors in his position that did that. Um, And even though he is like genteel, he still um, said that he's Jewish. So that was cool. So solidarity um, for that. But yeah. But anyway, so that's just my little (laughs) going and looking at the different uh, things. So yeah, so we have it is kind of funny because this movie is based on um uh you know Victor Hugo who's French and it's like directed um and stars German expressionist director and actor and then it's all made in you know US Mm -hmm. it's all Hollywood um so it is very funny just like random mix of things it felt (laughs) I yeah I was wondering because I've seen obviously I haven't seen the entirety of German expressionist films but I've seen you know M and the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Metropolis and little bits and pieces that's what this film kind of felt like because I mean this is it's a beautiful film the production design is amazing the costumes are incredible yeah uh, the the just the village the way the castle looks the way the village looks though it just their little wagons I mean every everything is just really well thought out uh but it feels I don't know why especially the wagons to me because when I looked at the wagons they were never straight everything Ooh, yeah. everything felt slanted and kind of on an angle that's true yeah and I just kind of felt oh okay this yeah it's um it's looks real but it's also not it's it's the right. expression for lack of a better word it's the expression of what of what a wagon would be and, the, right. and these are you know he goes to the palace palace gates or the palace doors and they have they look very pretty in art deco and I'm like okay this is what a palace would be or what a what a, a royal court would be but you kind of always feel a little bit like you're on a set a little bit yeah and it's funny because the ones where that feel the least in the set is at the frig show where it is basically a literal set mm-hmm. you know where everything mm-hmm. is kind of it like that feels almost slightly more realistic yeah. where at the same time it is like a place of artifice but i think there is also that like the combination or it's kind of like um it works really well for the subject of the story i feel like because you have like something that's off from it's you know i think that what makes the tragedy of the the permanent smile is that it's like just off from what we expect humans (laughs) you know to be right and so there is that kind of like i think it, it almost it makes perfect sense to do it in that style as well it's for the feels, theme yeah it feels almost like a, a fairy tale a, yeah. a little bit because there are very you know there's good and bad it's everything is incredibly black and white and in in the end um good triumphs kind of i mean which it's, is it's also very... the hollywood ending apparently the novel does not end like <laughs> no <that. laughs> it's also it's victor hugo it's never going to end right, like that right. no 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 but i mean he you know they the, this little misfit family wins you know they they escape the uh the the guards and everything but it's hard it felt it felt very bittersweet because they they got away and yet these people who are still incredibly prejudiced and incredibly selfish and that no one learns anything that they yeah no one no one actually learned anything because i mean we find out that uh uh, Conrad's character finds out that he is actually the son of a lord and you see this lord in the very beginning of the movie uh, as he's being tortured by by King James. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, the Lord has a son, and the son is going to be um, not executed. The son, the son is, is um, that he has a surgery performed on him, which gives him his ghoulish. This is the second grin. movie in a row that we have had a. Um, a surgery specifically as part of a revenge plot like oh yeah <laughs> like a weaponized surgery that's, a <laughs> that's the scariest thing. kind of surgery i know um, that's oh my why god i hate doctors oh i mean not god. that that is always what's happening but it is like you know <laughs> still a scary thing and also disabled people historically have you know there's been a lot of forced sterilizations mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. where it is basically that like yeah. you know yeah doctors not thinking about the well-being of the person they're treating <laughs> absolutely uh but the, the son is taken to this doctor who is um they use the slur in the in the film i'm just gonna say romani because i feel a little bit better oh yes that's yeah, good about, let's do that about saying that i so, was gonna say that yeah 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 Perfect. he yeah so he's taken to this romani doctor who performs the surgery and then they leave him behind to die basically and he wanders through the snow and finds this little baby who we find out is Dia, 
uh, who is blind, and they end up at um, Ursus. Urs- Here's another. It looks like Ursula to me every time I see it. I and know. Like, it's and not I, Ursula. And I, I see Ursa, but it's not. I think it's Ursus. I think so, too. I was, like, listening to them yep. read the names. Ursus. Yeah. Yeah. So he, so he ends up at the home of Ursus the Philosopher. That they do, they both do, yeah. Which is so funny because he's a, okay, he's a philosopher, but he's he's. I a, mean, he runs a, a, a sideshow. Yeah, he's more of a ringmaster or a sideshow. Yeah, because I, I was like, I saw the whole movie and then I was reading stuff where it was like synopsis to get it all right, and I was like, he was a philosopher, <laughs> like because they kept saying he was a philosopher, and I'm like, what, what was what was he philosophizing about? I don't know. It's I weird. mean, maybe so. Maybe he's called a philosopher because he he is. He is good enough or he knows that he should take these two children in one who's blind and one who is just um, who has had his face uh, yeah, altered all philosophy always it, it evokes like disabilities as metaphor. So maybe well, that's but it. he's maybe he's seen as 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 a person who on a higher level of thinking. He takes he takes he takes <laughs> so these sad. two in even though society might not want them. Yeah, that could be. Um, I Yeah, I mean. Maybe that's that's all of it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just we just didn't see him like really philosophizing entirely. But but maybe it is just like because they do a play as part of the mm-hmm. the sideshow and he scenario. he writes them right right. So, so he's this really is, more of a playwright. Yeah. <laughs> so he could be injecting some of his views and philosophies into his plays. Right, which is a very uh, Victor Hugo thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so and we um. We see them come to, it's many years later, and we see them come to a fair, and uh, uh, Gwynplaine is renowned now, and everyone knows him as the man who laughs. Yes. And he wears a mask, which, I'm like, oh my god, I saw the mask, and I was like, ooh, that's relevant. Uh it's yeah you know what it's so weird i oh, kept being God. like i kept being like not never sure why he put on the mask and sometimes and not others which i think it's supposed mm-hmm. to make some sort of symbolic sense but for me i was like i don't know i was very focused in on that and it did not occur to me until just now that he's wearing a face mask <laughs> well i mean he's, <laughs> the he's ma- not covering his nose no no so he's that's not. probably no. why i didn't the mask is the mask is how he gets around when he's not performing it's kind of like the sunglasses of like right. a, a blind person. In right. A way. It's funny because it's it's funny, strange because it's almost a um, reverse secret identity. Like you know, you, you would take something you would take something off to re- to reveal yourself. Clark Kent takes off his glasses and he's super. Right. But Gwynplaine. Well, I know, guess he's more like Superman, right? Because he has to take off the, the. But he has to he has to put his mask on to be taken seriously. At least that's how I, that's how I think he feels. Well, but I mean, isn't Clark Kent kind of the one who's like supposed to be more within the, you know, like kind of the slightly more anonymous person that right, could be yes. taken more yes. as like not an alien that's yeah. saving the world yeah, all the time? I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe maybe my 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 analogy is backwards. But or I mean, maybe your analogy is correct, and you're saying it's backwards. <laughs> um, it is I just, just like Superman. I just felt like because when he has the mask off. Everyone laughs at him, and it's it's irritating because they're they're saying, "Oh, look at him, look at him." We're we're laughing, and 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 he tries to explain, you know, about his face, and oh, stop laughing at me, stop. And I'm like, he's, but he's not laughing though. He's, yeah, he, mm, that's just his face. Like that's that is who he is. Yeah, <laughs> it's and it's also like. It did. It also bothered me because, um, and that's what I was going to say about the Joaquin Phoenix mm-hmm. thing, because I think that his is more specifically that he laughs, right? Yes. So he has a a dis a, phys, um, a disorder where uh, he cannot control his laughter, uh, and it's when he gets nervous or uncomfortable or um, excited or scared, he laughs. Which, um, like, I mean. You know. I think that that's something that, like, yeah, douchey people will judge you for, but it's not like you become a murderer because of that. It seems right. pretty, like, the you br- know, yeah. you could be met. The brilliant, the, the brilliant thing about Joaquin Phoenix's performances is, or performance is, is that um, his laughs look like they physically hurt. That's sad. Which is, it is, it's very sad. It's, it's, I'm not going to lie, from an acting standpoint, it's kind of amazing to watch. But it, every single laugh just 
rips through this man and it hurts like emotionally or physically both because laughs can't be physically taxing no but they are on him is it like um well because i've definitely had laughs where i'm like it is very uncomfortable oh yeah you laugh so hard you can't breathe yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it hurts is it that kind of like is that the physical pain or is it a different i think i think so that's kind of how i'm interpreting it because i guess if you're it's like and he wants to stop he wants to turn it off but he can't he because the more he tries to tamp it and control it it's like a tick the more he right. tries to tamp it down and control it the worse it's going to get which is like i don't know it seems like the likelihood of that making you a murderer is pretty slim <laughs> i think i think our maybe our next movie for, for scary october should be joker i, I like, know. no no lie we should just watch joker <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, then I can fully and then uh, it. yes, I just want to hear you hate on this movie. It would make me so happy. <laughs> yeah, part of it is Dark Knight. Oh, just so good. Um, oh my god, you have to put that away. <laughs> I know when, you, when you're watching. This well, one. I have already seen Suicide Squad, which is kind of oh, brilliant bo- in lech. how it is. Like it is the room level bad. It I love it so much. Just awful. Yeah. No, this is his joke. Leto's Joker is on a, is isn't even on the same level as <laughs> no. as um, Ledger or Phoenix. I mean, it's just no. Sometimes Gwynplaine did have a little bit of a um a Leto, um Jared Leto. Do we know exactly how he pronounces his last name? <laughs> Leto Leto. I Leto Leto. Potato Potato. Yeah. Let's call the whatever. Whole thing off. I just can't say anyone's name today. But his um. <laughs> Like sometimes there was a little bit of that in I, Conrad. Okay, I I suppose I saw a little bit more of. Well, I mean, really, a lot of the Jokers. You yeah, could see, yeah. You I mean, really I see it. Trying to think back, I'm like his because I mean his performance is really beautiful and gentle and very sympathetic, and he's just kind of thrown into some of these situations not by his own accord um yeah i mean for the i mean there's the whole thing with the duchess which he starts which is just so stupid but you know that um i would say he he felt a little he felt a little bit like phoenix as in yeah you know he's this very sympathetic it, character I, right I, he, I think he looks a lot like jack nicholson's joker to me no i could see that i mean it is like such an iconic idea to have like this smile you know like there is it is so specific to that character that even when i just like looked at a very terse plot synopsis i was like mm-hmm. oh this seems like it's probably what the character of the joker was based on <laughs> which it is like mm-hmm. so i think that that like you know it it they all kind of have some sort of you know this is kind of like the f- father to all of them but um mm-hmm. yeah i mean well and if you think about one of the one of the many ways joker kills his Joker venom leaves his victims with permanent grins on their faces. Right. Which so is that's far more cartoony than this movie. <laughs> oh, no, no, extremely. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. This movie is not a cartoon. I mean, it's not a cartoon at all. It's, no, you know. I did appreciate that, like, even though it is Hugo, I did like that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this is a really unpopular opinion that I have, but I really despise the Les Mis movie. I mean, I think it's just the play as part of it, too. It's oh, just it's, so dramatic. You, it's not an unpopular opinion, trust me. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just so... It is... I mean, actually, to that movie, I say, why so serious always? Because it is just so serious. It's very It's very cut up in itself. Um, But yeah, so I... But I did... I, I like that this kind of... It didn't, even though it is melodramatic, I think maybe being a silent film helped a lot, you know, for that. It does it. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be as uh, kind of funny and romantic as it was. I was I was really set up. I was go. I was all in. I was like, yes, it's it's a horror. I want to watch. You know, I'm <laughs> expecting Caligari. I'm expecting M. You know, and I'm like, yeah, let's okay, let's let's go. I want to. No, it's see, very Hollywood. I want to see this guy kill some people, and it just doesn't happen. No, which it's not at all. I'm I am totally fine with. I'm very happy uh, with with the way the story ended. I wanted this. I I wanted Gwen Plain to win. Yeah, I, and I wanted as ooky as it makes me feel i wanted him and, and dia to be together at the end yeah which okay so to talk more about their relationship and dia's character part of it is that gwynplaine is like i can't love you until a sighted right. person loves me right nonsense i it's i cannot even 
put that sentence together. I what? So he goes off to see, um, ja, uh, Jacia, the yeah. the uh, Duchess. It is great. We have a silent film with all these weird names. Oh, I know. That no one it's, says it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, he goes. He goes to see this Duchess, and she she doesn't like him basically because she's already she's already intended on marrying this other guy. Um, well, she sees him. She's in the audience, right? Yeah, and in the audience, she doesn't laugh at him. Mm-hmm. Which for me, I was like, that does not seem enough. Like, because he was like, oh my god, there's a beautiful woman, and she didn't laugh at me. Which I was like, what the hell? Like, your girlfriend's standing right there. Right. You have this. You have this <laughs> other beautiful woman who doesn't laugh at you. Right. Right. It was just who, like who actually loves you and wants to spend time with you. Right. It. It was really. It, that was like no this is not good like there's just no excuse for this like even though like you know obviously the times was 1928 and like we're not all that better now but like i was still just like this is ridiculous even i mean i can't say to the standards of 1928 but i was like it's you're not getting a pass from being old you can't just like be like telling a blind woman that her opinions don't matter like (laughs) and when she's saying she likes you and that it's only when a sight like because it's basically saying you're not a person like you are not a valid person well it's saying that because because the only person who can love you is someone who is disabled like you right then again it's like girls that's not real love (laughs) right 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 which would be like right it's it's not i don't i'm not measuring up if i don't if a sighted woman person doesn't love me or can't find me attractive whatever i'm unlovable not, right i'm unlovable i'm not measuring up to to what the standards right are. which is basically like i mean it's so deeply problematic <laughs> like it really like i feel like it it is the more you like pick it apart the more problematic it becomes like on the surface you could kind of like miss it as being super problematic but it's when you really get into it you're like the implications of that are so fucked up like like it basically is saying that like disabled people i mean it is desexualizing and saying that we and but it's also like de-romanticizing like we can't Mm -hmm. we're we have absolutely no ability to to, like give a standard of what can be love lovable which is also extremely extreme like that's not even romantic that's just pretty everyone deserves love like yes uh, it's pretty base level and the idea that if a disabled person loves you that you could still that that doesn't mean anything about you being unlovable it does compl- it's like so i don't know did this do you feel like this is as extreme as i feel like it is yeah no i mean yes yes i do i i i absolutely agree and that's pretty much what i thought i mean it was it was first it, i felt it was really strange this decision that he was making and then i just got really angry yeah <laughs> about it because i'm like it, dia has done nothing wrong to you you know she's loved you right she loves that's the you. only thing that she's done to you is she's shown you nothing but love and affection and has gone you know gone with you through all of this right and you're gonna you're gonna kick her to the curb for some pretty you know some duchess or whatever in a cheap dress or whatever because they're sighted i mean like it's yeah, just cause such a prom- like because it's already you could say that like well she's the only one who will love him because she doesn't see his smile which again logistically well, and, doesn't make any sense yeah but. well that that and she didn't laugh at him during the during the performance right well, the Duchess didn't. The Duchess, yes. I mean, technically, yeah. I guess Dia didn't either, but she's part of the She's too busy being in the play. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's, which again, like, that was another thing where I was like, yeah, laughing at a disabled person's existence, not great, but also like pitying them. Like, just because she's not laughing doesn't mean she's not pitying you. Like, that's not necessary. That doesn't mean point blank that she sees you like... I don't even know what his whole thing was. But, like, I guess for me, I was like, she's literally not making any noise. How do you know what her intentions are? <laughs> that seems like a big leap to me. <laughs> like, just logically. Like, well, you mean, haven't I, met this woman. Right. And, I mean, I guess that could that could give him, you know, give him some curiosity as to, I want to find out more about her. You know, why why is she not acting like the rabble who just comes to see me and, and laugh at me and, and point, you know, and right. And it's, it's, that was a really interesting relationship because a relationship, because I think he, he'd kind of accepted it, like accepted his job or his lot in life. Basically that this was is, this, this is all, this is it. This Which is, is all I'm good for. Fairly accurate to 
I mean, not even, like, much later than when the movie takes place. It was probably mm. <laughs> accurate to, like, within the lifetimes of some of the actors, you know. Maybe not by 1928, but that was, like, you know, turn of the century. That was pretty common. And then that would be, like, the best living you could make if you're a disabled person. Right, right. Well, and, I mean, there were so many people who were exploiting disabled folks. I mean, P.T. Barnum is a big one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it is also weird because, like, a lot of those things were, like, you that was your only option to make money right which it's hard because you're like i mean it is it puts it in this really weird space of being like this was the only option people had which is like obviously very bad Mm -hmm. but like it also was at a time when this was a way for people to make money and have some sort of control over their life and so it's like this very murky like that's why it it made me happy seeing them with ursus and knowing that they were there of their own accord. He wasn't forcing them. Right. He wasn't punishing them. You know, he was giving. Well, he is, was giving them, like you said, he was giving them work. I mean, I think that that, and I'm like, no, I, I like, I really should have looked up more, um, like refreshed from because I've heard stuff about it in the past, but like to get really accurate information of those. But I feel like a lot of them, they they did have, like, you know, they generally just had very little power in society but it was like a opportunity to kind of be a performer and be making actual money off of it that would not just be entirely going to the ringleader you know like that they would be seeing some of that because I mean there is like a worse scenario where it's like where they're not getting any right where you could have you could have been sold to the to the sideshow instead right, of more employed of like, by kind them kind of like human yeah, trafficking exactly. kind of thing which yeah, i think yeah. i mean maybe some of them were human trafficking i would i wouldn't be surprised if there was some but i think like a decent amount of them were not were not were more of like a job and at a time where you know being especially having like a very visible disability mm-hmm. just meant that you just didn't have any job which you and, know and still as, problematic but. right and as far as um, people making a living off of being a sideshow attraction. Uh, this stuff was still happening. Um, I mean, up until like the fifties. Yeah. The stuff. The stuff in you know in America in America in the U S with the circus circuit and everything. Right. Like this, this stuff was still happening. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. I mean, the- which is why it's funny. It takes place in the seventeenth century. <laughs> You're like, oh, it could be well, any time. Really. Well, I mean, disabled folks were still, you know, in. Um, employed as jesters i mean in this movie the jester is a conniving backstabbing not very nice person can't trust him can't and no i mean look at his face he's One, more of a joker kind of yes character. i thought he was going to be the evil villain of the of the of the film and joker in, v joker yes <laughs> and, and, be and in, in in some sense he is he is the villain of the piece but he's definitely um he's definitely not uh not gwenplaine yeah no because, yeah, it is. They, they are good foils, I guess, for each other, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, I was going where I was yeah, going yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Jest, jesters. So, fun fact, um, jesters were usually developmentally disabled folks. I didn't know that. Because uh, they, the belief was that they had been touched by God. Um, interesting. Mm-hmm. To be a jester? Yep. God? Mm-hmm. That's I so don't, specific. I don't. I don't know how it works, or how, I'm not trying to like put logic no, no, behind no. it. But yeah, that's yeah. A lot of a lot of court gestures were uh, mentally disabled. I mean, like that's cool, but then I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, it's better than blackface employing disabled people. Like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Sure, there's a lot of blackface too, but that was like a minstrel show. Well, yeah, okay, I'm talking in medieval times, yeah, like yeah. way before minstrel shows. Yeah, um, yeah, I did. I had. I really did not know that. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. It is kind of weird because I think about like I feel like also probably like intersex people. I was trying to think if like transgender people would wind up in because I know you always hear like things like bearded lady which i don't know how, if that's primarily intersex people who would also be part of that group that is a good question i don't know um but but yeah i mean just like also being disabled and gender queer myself even like i think about that a lot of like yeah there was a time where that would be you know that would just be what you got that would, that would be your <laughs> option um <laughs> which is i mean 
it is like so problematic and bad but then at the same time i'm like disabled people don't get jobs now like we are the amount of discrimination is so extreme like that it does would, almost feel like have we really come very far yeah at all? but would you really want a job i mean yeah gwen plain and dia have jobs sure they have they have a roof over their head too yeah but they're his his performance is to be laughed at by thousands of people. No, it's I mean, and not and not like problematic. not like he's a comedian or anything, but like literally laughed at because he is different. Right. I mean, it is kind of weird. I have like a weird like fondness of it, and just that like the audiences coming. It it is it is a very fucked up idea in general, and it is to gawk at like you know it is basically like. <sighs> I'm seeing a human zoo, but isn't that what they were called? Like, that was not, that's not a metaphor. Isn't that sometimes? I'm trying to think, what is a human zoo? I mean, um, human, I hear human zoo and I think sci-fi stuff, but, but, oh, essentially, but yeah. essentially a sideshow or, you know, freaks, people would call them sideshow freaks. It is, it is a human zoo. You right, are, right. you are going, you are paying money to go and look at these people who are on display. Yeah. And they are there. For you to look at and it doesn't matter if you you you're separate you're separate from them they don't they're not human yeah no de- it is very i think they're definitely very dehumanizing and probably had because i don't know there's sometimes you hear ones about like people who, like indigenous people that like did not speak the language and like that feels like especially exploitative like this person isn't even consenting to this at all like you don't mm-hmm. like there are different layers of levels of like upsetting on the like performer side i think or coercively like the coerciveness i think is like was somewhat of a spectrum but <sighs> I mean, I think about, like, a drag show or something like that. Like, there is, like, something about right. performativity yes. if, as a celebration of yeah. a certain identity. And I yeah. don't I don't think that they always did that. But I think that there's sometimes you get, like, a spark of that. I think part of it is just we've come... We've just not come very far with disability in general. Well, and, there, and there are, you know, there are still sideshows and circus performers. And, and, right. and they enjoy, you know, some of them... Are all of them are really talented, but you know some of them are acrobats. Some of them, uh, some of them dance. Some of them train animals. Some of them tattoo their body in crazy ways. Right. Some, of, some of them get have their body altered in crazy ways, but but it's their choice. Right, and there is I think I think sometimes yeah, it's like a when it can be like a queering of, um, you know just the body and performance i mean i think that that like aspect of it i i am i don't know if it's sympathetic but it's like is a performance you know Mm -hmm. and like sometimes i think about how like when people are like strip clubs are so exploitative or whatever it's like it's you know that's not yes but have you have you seen pole dancing i mean it's a work it's a skill yeah it's it's, it's really it's a it is a a, and having I, having been friends with strippers before, you know, it's it's the old strippers are people too. Yes, well, that's what I are, mean. Like it is a similar too. thing of like people are coming to watch it, but it's also like it is genuinely you are performing and you are doing right. work and right. you are you know, you know, you, for the vast majority of them in the U.S., it's not it's. Well, it's not usually coerced. You um, have to be, yeah. You but have, it is sometimes financially. Mm. But yeah. You have to be very comfortable with with yourself. I right. Think. I, I mean, I would be. I would be to do that work, and I'm definitely not. So I'm, you know, I'm not doing that work. But I would never look down upon anybody. Right. Who, well, I mean, who feels comfortable enough or who, do, who does that work, if that's how you I make I was recently being like, I would love to do that. It'd be fun. <laughs> um, I, I had a friend who kept telling me, like, man, you should just do it. You should just do it. Every, yeah. Port, every, there's a type Portland's. for everybody in Portland. <laughs> you like, should. No. You should become strippers. <laughs> no. No, um, thank you. <laughs> But no, I mean, that's good. It's your choice. But do you think, like, the comparison is unfair? I mean, like, genuinely, because it might be unfair. The, com- the comparison between... Like, a, um, like stripping, like, someone, both people, like, non-coercively, you know, stripping or, like, like the... F- the freak shows. I don't think that it's exactly I a mean, comparison, but you can kind of... Kind of, kind of, sort of, your job is to be looked at by people. Right. Your job is to perform, is to do a thing, 
and have people Google you and look at you and watch you. Right. And then, you know, pay you for it. So it's a similar. It's a similar experience, I guess. Not not so much a similar career. Um, Just like in the in your job duties. Yeah. Though, I mean, like Kinda. it is still physically. I think a lot of the per- there were a decent amount of performances mm-hmm. that still had that element of either mm-hmm. physical taxing or like actual like. You know, I think some of them were just like literally, this is a human being, gawk at them. And I think that's yes, when it's like yes. especially problematic. Yeah. But I do think that when there is that performance involved, then for me, it kind of, especially if someone doesn't, isn't being like, is only being coerced because they don't have another option, which I mean, mm-hmm. again, is on, but I mean, not dislike. Yeah. But I mean, to your point that, uh, that, you know, disabled folks, some liked it because, yeah, they were working and they were making their own money. Yeah, there definitely were cases of folks who, yeah, this is this is my job now. This is what I'm doing. I'm right. You I'm, can't I'm like project it. on. It's like projecting on all strippers. Mm-hmm. Like you're just being exploited, and they're right. like, I don't know. Right. I'm having a fun. T- I'm having just a fun right. time. I'm making and, money. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I I don't think necessarily Gwen Plain and D- and Dia were depressed or oppressed all the time. I mean, I mean, they seem like they were doing just fine i mean i think it is like and that's what's so weird is because you have like it is problematic to come to a place and laugh at a disabled person for being disabled that's really really problematic but then like it's also problematic to project onto everyone involved that they're being exploited even if they're consensually doing this making money off of it and feeling like fulfilled by it Mm -hmm. um like that's also problematic and then yeah and I mean I think then on top of that I think about right now and just how I don't really know if we like again like it's really hard to find work as a disabled person there's extreme discrimination like we do have pretty limited options and are constantly needing to prove that we can do things we're not you know we're a lot of it is kind of gone under the cert like ableism is a little bit more you know, it's not as overt as it used to be, but it doesn't always, sometimes that can feel worse because you just want someone to like be, you know, you'd rather someone just be direct about their ableism. I mean, okay, I'm speaking for myself. I would rather someone be really <laughs> direct about their ableism. Like, I think when it's couched and stuff, that feels like you kind of, it's like gaslighting, you feel. Well, yeah, if you're, if you interview me and you have no, you have no qualms about uh, not hiring me. Like right. you, you know for a fact you're not going to hire me because of my disability tell me tell me that i yeah. that it's that it's not going to happen and don't leave don't leave me hanging and then just oh yeah you, you we hired someone else or whatever like don't right it's like it's maddening like and you also always because you're because then you also have two things in your head of like is this because of that I am a disabled person or is this something wrong with me and that's just like a really terrible place to be in. Gwynplaine finds out that he he, obviously he's the son of the Lord and that makes him the heir. So he With Jesus? I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, (laughs) No. Uh, He is uh, welcomed, not welcomed, he is um, given the position to be, to work in the house of uh, lords basically. And to marry and to marry the duchess yeah to come right. to come to court with the queen to marry the duchess and be a, a peer of england in the house of lords good and job remembering all those words that thank i couldn't remember you. Thank no. you. <laughs> uh and of course uh it doesn't it doesn't go well at all well it, also i don't think he wants to be there cuz no, there's no, also like he, he has no, ursus and dia right. have been banished out yeah, of they England. they threw them out of England. Yeah, the or the Queen threw them out of England. We do have yeah. like the same way the White Countess ends. We have a very similar scenario. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I thought mm-hmm. of that because I mean, I guess I think it's the only move, only other movie we've watched with a like a boat people leaving in a boat kind of <laughs> climax now i've been watching so much media during the quarantine <laughs> yeah. i'm just like of a million it all, shows it all blends head. together yeah. at this point <laughs> yeah uh but obviously it, it doesn't go well and it the the lords have this, pretty much the same reaction that the crowd of crowds of people have who come to watch him it's the his smile is mm-hmm. that he's he, that he's laughing at them and why won't he stop laughing and isn't he funny? Ha, 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 ha. Which also, like, a blind person can tell when you're laughing, so the whole time. Oh, right. Exactly. And and, and before this... Like, it's not making noise. Yeah. 
Before all of this had happened, Dia and Gwenplaine had finally professed their love to each other in a, a rather, a, a literal, a literal touching scene. Yeah. Uh, when she finally, and I thought she had felt his face I for the know. first time, but I guess she hadn't because she really like won't, like her hands just go directly to his face because she's always touching him. He's, Why she's touching it's... him and he's touching her, which is kind of beautiful actually. Uh, in that's just their communication. They, that's their language. They communicate through Lots of touching, but I Which guess she had sweet, never touched his face. But yeah, again, like, I guess they just never kissed or anything. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, they must not have. Also, even when they do start kissing, it's very unclear exactly the... I mean, because I don't... This is not based on an actual condition someone has. I mean, there might be something sort of close, because it's not just that he's scarred to make it look like he's smiling. He truly... His mouth actually is right, such right. that he's smiling. And I, I mean, I think that's where we have to suspend the disbelief just a wee bit, because what this would be a crazy surgery. I mean, you would have to, like pin his cheeks up or you know yeah. sew some things it's almost together like a, you know a clockwork orange kind of almost level of yeah because if you think about manipulation right because if you think about that's why Heath Ledger's Joker is the way he is because the scars that he actually has are real right. things like that right. is something that happens to people right and that is a lot closer to something where you could you know be more uh, realism I mean it's not this movie is definitely I don't think stylistically going for realism yeah. even just in that era that was not as much of a like the realism in movies is, is a much more recent thing in Hollywood it didn't used to be um, that was not the, the goal most of the times but yeah so well, the, he's, yeah no their, their costumes were beautiful but they were from all over the place I yeah they none of the, they looked cool but none of them matched and as far as like time period and then the duchess is so funny because she's wearing all this beautiful things and yet her face and hair are like complete 1920s I know I'm I just know. like whoa, she's like the whoa, most whoa. 1920s it's yeah so... yeah it, it kind of threw me for, she's beautiful she's absolutely but it's gorgeous like, you're like oh we're but, in the 20s yeah I'm just like oh yeah clearly <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it anyway. is always yeah. Fun to watch because we've watched uh, Deuce Mountain and also recently uh, Place in the Heart. It was also a movie that was takes place in a different era. Actually, funnily enough, closer to when this movie was made than it, <laughs> that one takes place. Um, so now we just need to watch a movie that takes place in the eighties that was made there now or something. There you go. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so his his face is such that he's truly smiling, which means that mm -hmm. like. I mean, because his lips are that way, they couldn't kiss. Like it would just it doesn't it, seem physically possible. Uh, yeah, it's um. It's very unsettling. <laughs> it is. It's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you feel for him absolutely because you get to know him through the, throughout the course of the movie, and it you know, and by the end, it's just that's Gwen playing. That's how he looks, you know. But I mean, it's really unsettling. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like I was thinking about like, would I find this like if I knew someone who who did have this because mm -hmm. I feel like for me I was just like I once you know that that's you know something going yeah, on with them yeah, of course I mean because I guess it is because we do have to use non-visual cues to like understand someone's emotions it is weird in a movie to like mm -hmm. not be because usually like in real life I have a lot less ability to tell someone's facial expressions but in a movie um there's much the close-ups are so much more extreme on people's mm -hmm. faces that I would never really be able to get that close to someone I was talking to um so I think that like it definitely probably at least for me would have been weirder to like it's more jarring in a movie than if it, I actually did just know this person in real life which is interesting I mean but I guess the movie's already saying like blind people are gonna have a different <laughs> opinion on this so I mean I guess that's correct. Yeah, but I but don't I mean, know. She, I mean, Dia, Dia loves him for him. She loves right. him because he's sweet and symp and sympathetic and nice, and they have been together for years and years and years, which is still super weird. But hey, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's I mean childhood friends. There, there are age difference, but he, he yeah, was a kid. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they're raised by the same father. I mean, that is kind of weird. If yeah. you if you take it on like, um, he adopted these two kids and then raised them together, and they are a family. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's I'm, hard. These are great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, I mean, I'm a, I'm getting hung up on hung up on a very tiny detail, but it's just yeah, it's a little weird. I I I I get that. Yeah, I mean, I think. Because it's only at the beginning of the movie, too. At least I was able to kind of put that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah, but I, it's, I, I totally understand why 
you would get hung up on the phone at two. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I don't know what their relation. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Although now that you mention it, yeah, kissing would be impossible. Right. <laughs> I never thought about that. And it's yeah. like, oh my god, all she'd get is teeth. <laughs> yeah, I. It is a. Uh, it's. Yeah, that really, from the beginning, I was like, how do they kiss? Well, maybe that's my, like, you know, 21st century woman. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, like, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they would figure out plenty plenty of other ways that's to have true. a relationship. Yeah, there yeah. you go. They have, I like that. They have to figure out their own special ways to, to I do like things. that a lot. Um, uh, that makes it. Well, just like when, when Gwen, Gwen Flynn was supposed to kiss the queen's hand when he became a lord. Oh, right. He yeah. didn't do that. He wasn't able what to. he right, he couldn't he wasn't able to. So what he did was he bent down and touched her hand um with his like uh between that place where your nose and your forehead kind of meet. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, I like that. You you made it seem seem sweet and kind of like disability queer po- <laughs> positive and so never mind. I think it's great now um, <laughs> uh, that they can't kiss physically. How do you feel like you would um, if you had Gwynplaine as a person in your life? Like, do you think it would be something you would get hung up on or? I mean, sure. At first, it's going to be a little odd because it's, yeah. it's hard when you're different. You are different. Right. You know, you if we all smiled like Gwynplaine all the time, then it, we, it would be, quote unquote, the norm right but it isn't so yeah but i think having a friend like gwenplaine is is could could be akin to having a friend who is missing a limb or whose face is a little is a little you know whose face is different i mean maybe not necessarily in a permanent smile but you know whose face right, there's is, a is lot different. of different ways in which that can sure have, yeah yeah is a disability too like right, to have right. a face that's so i think I think it would just be about learning about each other and and learning to not I don't want to say look past because I don't want to deny someone a part of someone's identity. Right. That's who you are. Like your his your face makes you who you are. That is part of you. Yeah. So I want to acknowledge that that's part of you, but also I we should be able to be friends because uh because we we become friends. We have things in common or we make each other laugh or we tell, you know, tell these long winded stories to each other. We just enjoy hanging out. So, yeah, I think after a while, it just wouldn't be such a big deal. Yeah. Anymore. Like you just get used to it. Right. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I mean, it's it's not that it wouldn't be the like the end of the world for knowing that, per- you know, like it's, right, just such a, yeah. it's like it's up to people to adapt and it's really not that hard, like mm-hmm. from the other end. Like, I feel like a lot of the times all this friction is just caused by the, you know, either able people or just the people around a disabled person who just cannot handle it. Well, and that's the whole the whole House of Lords scene. It's so fucking superficial. I mean, they're dressed to the nines in these ridiculous outfits and it's all about looks and um and your station you know and he has the station he he is the son of a lord so he's a lord right right but he just they cannot get past the way he looks and they don't even want to hear what he has to say and they don't really care about what he has to do he's it's he's kind of a made a mockery right of, and he's oh you get to marry the duchess now well ho, 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 ha 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 duchess you have to marry that you know instead of yeah. you, instead of the person that you wanted to marry and this there's I think the thing that's the, so depressing about that to me is I'm like you still hear a lot of people tell stories about the exact same thing happening to them today like and I mean I think you know blindness is is it's a kind of like a borderline sometimes it's invisible disability sometimes it's a visible disability but I've definitely heard of stories um yeah and like dating where people are just like totally it's like you're not supposed I mean it's it is like the desexualizing but especially if you have a physical disability mm-hmm. like that just happens so often it's and it's so hard for some people to get past that and yeah, see which is like, and see the person that's there completely cultural it's like mm-hmm. not it's truly nonsense like and it's so infuriating right. well, and yeah I mean you because ha- you still have cultures I mean watching Blind Sight a couple of weeks ago you still have cultures that see blindness as a curse so if they see yeah. blindness as a curse well how do you think they feel about any other disability yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's, I think, 
it's funny i feel like this is what i was saying with city lights too is it is sometimes depressing when we watch these movies from like the 20s where we're like "Ah, is it all that different now not that much it's just kind of all the same now still fighting the same battles (laughs) yeah (laughs) which is extremely depressing um and then i think it's probably even more depressing than you know the state of things at that time just just It is really upsetting just how much I'm like, yeah, I've heard people say, you know, I've heard stories or experience things that are like basically the same as this. And it's like a movie from the 20s about the 17th century. Like it's not trying to be a modern, you know, telling of like a prejudice. It's a romance. (laughs) Right. Is what it is. It's a, this is classified as a horror mystery romance. You know, like And that's what it is. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That is a disabled person's life. Horror mystery mystery romance. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I, yeah, I, I, I hope that like, so things have sort of gotten better in some ways. I mean, I think that like, that I, I mean, I would hope that the thing where he's like, I can't be loved until a sighted person loves Ugh. me. I mean, I hope that we're like, at least some like past that a little bit. I mean, and maybe he was thinking that because if a sighted person loves him, then, then he would be worthy enough to be loved by Dia. Like I, maybe he was afraid of, of that because he honestly, because of his disability and she's so beautiful, you know, he has sight and I'm, and Dia's gorgeous. I mean, she's beautiful, you know? Yeah. So maybe, maybe he just thought that he wasn't, this was his, some weird ass way for him to prove that he was worthy enough to be with her. I mean, I think it is, but I, I, (sighs) But it's just that's the thing that makes no sense to like, that's the thing that I think is problematic. The idea that like that that it can't that she can't be enough to say that she cares about like that her opinion is irrelevant Mm -hmm. because it's like it is. I mean, it's just on its face dehumanizing. Like, yeah. Even if it, like, because just to, the idea that a sighted person needs to love him for him to be loved by her. Like, even... It, we, it sounds weird saying it. It's just this really <laughs> weird circle, a triangle, I don't know, shape that, like, runs back on itself. And I'm like, this is, ah, no. <laughs> I mean, no, it, no. but it's like, at the heart of it, why it doesn't make any sense is because at the heart of it, it's saying a disabled person isn't a valid human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why it makes exactly. no sense. Yeah, no, it, But I think because exactly. it's like, it's constructed on a completely, you know, it's like you're trying to build a house on a hole and you're just, I don't know. Oh, you're, you're, no, I get it. You're trying, you're, you are, you're building the foundation of your house on sand. Yeah. Instead Something of, like, instead of stone. Right. On like quicksand. <laughs> which, I don't yeah. Know, I mean, and thing. this, and you know, Gwen, Gwen, Gwen Plain almost had to have this relationship you know, with this, with this woman who doesn't love him. I don't, I don't dislike the Duchess because I mean, she's, she's mean and not, and not a nice person, but honestly, she doesn't love Gwenplaine. She doesn't want to marry him. Not because hopefully not because of his, of his disability, but she doesn't want to marry him because she doesn't love him. She loves her betrothed. Right. Which I mean, like maybe anachronistic because I don't think there was really that was a time period where people were getting married for love anyway. So, well, yeah, especially no. not like royalty. Right. No, no, no. Because he, he was a lord and she was a duchess. So obviously they're going to get married. But she was already bet- betrothed to another courtier. Right. But I mean, I feel like that's probably a Hollywood was like, yeah, they, they loved each other. But that's probably anachronistic and that they wouldn't have like in real life if, right. at that yeah. time period. No, but yeah. you, you're, you are a woman. You are property. You will marry who I say you're going to marry. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and the fact that I mean that she doesn't laugh at him again, I like to me I read it as pity to begin with, which is not that's mm-hmm. not a good thing either. Mm-hmm. Like no, you don't want to. No. And I think maybe I mean maybe that assumption that he made that she, by not laughing that means that she wasn't pity. Does that mean we've progressed and that <laughs> we like you know it's it's our standards are higher than just don't laugh at me? <laughs> like I don't know, but um it's still yeah i mean it's a it's an interesting movie it's interesting Mm -hmm. to know where the joker came from yeah that that's a really cool piece of trivia that we have in our back pockets now and i mean and of course in the end there's a huge you know gwen plain runs from the from the house of lords and there's a huge chase after him to get him and bring him back i guess and force him to marry this woman that he doesn't want to marry right and 
he and uh, he and Dia and their dog and all the clowns and Ursus uh, escape in a boat and yep. sail to freedom. And also, just because it's so weird, <laughs> and I looked up why this is true, but the dog <laughs> is for some reason named Homo. Yes. Okay. I blinked. <laughs> I had to run it back a few times because I was like, no, I read that wrong. It's Hamo or Hamo nope, or nope. Hamon or something, you know, and I'm like, N- nope it's homo <laughs> which was so bizarre that i was like what is that a reference to it so i did look it up and what it is is it's a latin phrase homo homini lupus oh um yeah it's a latin proverb that meaning is a man is a wolf to another man which i guess is like the idea you judge a stranger a man with, like as a beast kind of um, it doesn't make any sense in our cultural a man a man is a wolf to, to another, another man. man it's competition yeah it's kind of like implying sort of an us versus them mentality mm-hmm. um but it doesn't really make a lot of sense because i feel like t- like with our sensibilities we're like oh the wolves are cute and, and it's just <laughs> yeah um <laughs> it doesn't really make sense but i guess it's basically a metaphor for how queen plain being you know people f- f- uh I mean, they don't, it's, they sort of fear him, but it's not really, they like, it's more of an objecti- objectification. Well, and but. if you, uh, if you think about the wolf in, you know, mythology or folklore, uh, wolves are, were always feared because a wolf can come in and eat your flock and terrorize you. in sheep's clothing. Right, exactly. But now I just think of a dog when I hear a wolf, I'm like, it's a wolf, <laughs> which is like, obviously a very... Not not your classic, you know, danger to human <laughs> animal. But, I mean, they can be, but you, it's not your first thought mm-hmm. when you think of a dog. Um, but, yeah, it, but it does, yeah, so I guess it's just kind of, in short, means, like, you judge another person right. um, as a danger. Exactly. Bingo. That's much, that's very succinct. You hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Uh, I was like, we could, <laughs> um, we're like trying to, we, tr- I mean, you know, generally on this podcast, we always try to like use, um, like the, like humane terms. I mean, I don't know, there's probably a better word for that, but like, you know, the, the correct, um, terms for things even when the movie does it but i was like it's not like we can just be like gay person right no <laughs> it's, it's, we have to just say the name come, come here gay person <laughs> no <laughs> that would be very ridiculous if we did that but yeah, yeah. so and, and in the end uh homo the dog saves uh saves gwenplaine actually and helps yeah. them and helps them get away and Which after the lobster i was just like yes <laughs> oh i know and gets back on the ship because i was like if we have to see another know, dog no, die i know i, I was can't, so worried I about can't. that yep he attacks <sighs> he attacks the the guards and uh gets away <laughs> yes like, yes oh yes. and they pull him back up into the ship i'm like oh thank god i thought they I were know. gonna let him drown <laughs> i was very excited i mean I, I feel like one of even though i have a dog that hates water so much but one of the like sometimes you have a classic dog attribute is they love swimming mm-hmm. so it's like i bet he can make it oh no not i've never had a dog that's loved i water. haven't either so uh, but it is like i feel like it happens in movies like that's where that stereotype in my head comes from so <laughs> well also it depends on the dog breeds some some dog breeds are drawn to the yeah. water. They're more suited to water. I think I've just had like terriers, so my guess is that well, they're just go. the least suited to water. They're they're so low to the ground, they like to dig holes. Right. They, they, they're they're earth doggies. Yeah, yes. Water a lot of water doggies have um like the Newfoundland actually has webbing between its toes. So it makes it easier to swim around oh, in the go. water. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I, I mean, we both are toff, so that's why we, <laughs> yeah, we, there you go. we gravitate towards land dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess on that note, um, I don't know. Do we have anything else to talk about before we get to our blind skinny? I mean, just uh, I really liked it and I'm very glad I, I consider myself a not a film scholar, but as a lover and a connoisseur of film. And I love and should watch more uh, very, you know, old silent historical films and it's just nice to see that this movie uh, has gotten love 
as as the years have gone a on. Legacy. Because a legacy. Yeah, a legacy. Because when it bombed when it opened. It did yeah, not and also do well. critically uh, panned. Yeah, nobody liked it critically. I'm like, okay. And now it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Right, Weird right. Weird turnaround. It's insane. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm... Go watch, go watch the movie. It's a, it's a treat, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. And Do you want to? I feel like you. This is a good way to transition into. Oh, blindness acuity. Yeah, ah, I mean your ah. specific one. Sure. Okay. Well, um, I would, uh, I would give this twenty twenty two. I think. Okay. Yeah. O- only because I. I mean, obviously, this movie. You know, Gwenplaine is the more um, interesting and fleshed out character and Dia isn't really. She is kind of yeah. sort of there to be his love interest. And she's not. Ne- I mean, the good thing is, is she's not necessarily damseled, which was really nice, which was yeah. what I thought was going to happen. And then it didn't. She is the one who is keeping him grounded. She's the one who's always there, no matter how much he fucks up. Yeah, but that's also kind of like, oh, that's her one purpose. Okay, so yeah, so I'm giving giving it a a, a twenty twenty one, but I I think we still twenty two is what you said. Twenty two, anyway. sorry, I'm yeah, <laughs> twenty 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 two, um, because uh, I think there was still a lot to discuss, and yeah. um, and I think we had a really, I think we had a really interesting discussion, and I'm not, um, a worse person for have seeing it. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully we don't have too many movies that make us a worse person and then we'll just be insufferable. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, this podcast is killing me. No, um, no. no. So um, I'm going to give it a 20, 25. Um, I feel like, yeah, you have a blind character, you know. Um, you have, like you're saying, like not a damsel in distress that she has some agency that there's not a lot of pitying her and also that she's just like not like wanting to be cited which sad that we always have to bring that up when it's not happening but like it is kind of nice to not see that i mean when we saw city lights that was the whole character is the main linchpin of that movie so it is kind of cool to see a 28 movie where you just have a blind character that's you know fine um being being herself um and you know and, and it's you know it is a cliche to have a blind character that sees past it like it's like some sort of physical <laughs> difference um that you know is very cliche but eh, i guess it's like not it's pretty low on my list of problematic cliche things it's like we can't see so valid <laughs> um but, but obviously there's you know, side of people should get their act together and not see humans as humans, but whatever. Um, yeah, so, I mean, those are the good things. I, it's a long time ago, so, you know, I think that, like, for me, I'm not giving it a higher rating just because the idea that she can't, like, that that she can't be believed that she likes him, <laughs> like, that it has to be a side of, like, that, that feels like... Uh, another level of of problematic that I I feel like um, that's why I'm not giving it a, a very yeah, high rating. Just, I mean, there, there just wasn't a lot for her to do. She was yeah. kind of just pure and saintly, right? Exactly. And to be, I don't. I think she's above an object. Like I don't think she was objectified, but she is one note. She is one note. She is the the person, the thing that Gwenplaine is going after. Right. She she kind of plays a lot more like a plot device than anything else. Mm-hmm. And and we really just have very little window into to her character. I mean, you know, it's a silent movie. There's like you don't always get that much of a window into any of the characters really. Um <laughs> just cuz of it's it's more of like a, you know, melodramatic play kind of I don't know, pacing. I don't really know what I'm saying, but like you're not yeah um you kind of have to read into characters a little bit more um but but she i think subsequently we only we don't really get it's not the movie isn't about her we're not really getting to see her internal life as much as we might have with because i think when playing we do get it like we have we i mean this podcast is about blind characters we talk mostly about him and he's not the blind character (laughs) so like obviously there he was a more meaty right but we're still we're still talking about disability in general yes yeah that's true that i mean if it wasn't disabled maybe well i don't know whatever but But, i mean you know and well and then there's the whole bit where uh uh dia wants to know where gwenplaine is and he's been taken to the house of lords so they put 
they put the show on anyway. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my God. There's so much good blind character things we should talk about. I know. I completely forgot I about forgot this. About that I too. I don't know how I forgot about it, but I was like, oh shit. Well, well. I mean, you know, let's we could really quickly talk about it. We're gonna um, circle back. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah, guys. That's okay. Um, it's a long movie. <laughs> um, yeah. It's almost. It's almost two hours actually. Yeah. Yeah. It mm-hmm. is pretty long. Um, in silent movies, it does sometimes. You because you have to be using your eyes more, so oh it my, feels longer. Yeah, si- um, um, I enjoy silent movies, but they are so hard to watch. Yeah. There's so much work; it's yeah. ridiculous. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. So they at one point they convince her that because um, they don't tell um, Dia that Gwynplaine right that he just. He just doesn't have the heart to tell him yet, to, tell, is, to tell her that Gwenplaine isn't also coming back. Also, maybe why my ratings shorter or you know a smaller number because that's don't do that to a disabled person. Don't like it. That's like number rule number one of like a fucked up thing to do. It. Don't do this to a blind person. Like don't just not give them important information about what's going on because you because it's gonna hurt them. It's like no, that's like it is it is abusive to not tell people what's happening when they can't see. Like it, that's just. Yeah, really fucked up. Yeah, because um, I mean, so he's, he's me got long. he's got all the clowns in the bleachers, and they're all you know, Gwen, Gwen Plain, Gwen Plain, ah, and he's just like, uh, um, he's like, oh yeah, the crowd is even bigger. Or yeah, he tells her, and then she's like, oh, the crowd is even bigger than it was last night. And I'm like, oh, oh my god, no, That's no, don't terrible. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just gonna make bad. it worse for her when she finds out, and she finds out, and it's worse. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like. Oh, but I did also I do love the other thing that I forgot to talk about that was my favorite thing is I don't I don't think um, Homo is supposed to be a guide dog but I love the, the proto guide dog he does thing he does when yes. they're running is he just yes. like pulls her dress yes That's yes so and he comes he comes up to Gwenplaine a couple of times and like puts his paws on you know and yeah, yeah and, and he does the same thing to uh, to Dia too and it's just like oh my god he's their guide dog it's I so love it cute. and he actually pulls her dress yes. it's so cute come this it. way come this way oh my god oh my god I should teach oh. Sam Wise to do that yes I, then I'd have to wear more dresses. I'm wearing one today, but it's not my usual. But yeah, Homo, the breakout star of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> he's adorable. <laughs> he's so cute. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He. It was. It was very nice to watch a dog not get killed. Though I, <laughs> I should have looked it up beforehand because I was like, oh, so cute dog, but I can't handle it if you get hurt. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to die. Um, <laughs> Samwise is like, oh. Don't you love me? I'm getting up and saying hi because I you're talking, yeah, you're about, talking dogs. about dogs. You you want it? You want a dog? I'm a dog. I'm right exactly. here. I'm your, I'm your dog. He's hey. like, why don't you love me? It's not just homo. <laughs> that's such a oh, that's such a bad name for a dog. Very unfortunate. I feel like also that is like a weird. I mean, is it a slur exactly? It's not a good thing to call someone. I, and I it mean, can be used as a slur, sort of, but it's usually yeah. not even used. I mean, I'm I'm a queer person, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't walk up to a friend like I wouldn't walk up to you and be like, "What's up, homo?" You know, I, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's no. Not, it's. I mean, it's really. I maybe I think sometimes it's been occasionally reclaimed, but it's not a common one. To I don't. Be I don't want that word. Pers- yeah. personally, I don't need it. I don't want I it. I feel like it's <laughs> also like very specific to like um like you would not call a woman. No homo. Well, because there's because there's the I don't like it because of the phrase no homo. Well, it's a bad. It's a it's yeah. overall bad, and it's normally used like it's it's like used as an insult usually among straight people, mm-hmm. which you know not not good um, in general. Uh, but like, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it is there are certain ones where you are more like the f word you might be more likely to use like specifically Oof. as a threatening term yeah. whereas like yeah. is i feel like uh, almost a little bit I really don't. i'm like uh no to say knowing what i know now like what you said when you when you right. actually when you actually looked it up and it's linked to something like they're, yeah they're not calling the dog homo just to be funny you yeah know, no because that would make no it's, sense because it's yeah. also like i think in my lifetime that became something anyone would say like i do remember hearing that term for the first time when it did not exist like it is a very <laughs> new like word like you just wouldn't like it is a very like you know 20 
aunt, like aunts mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's I like I could definitely see someone using that word in a period piece specifically because it's so mm-hmm. specific to the aunts mm-hmm. that people said that. So I think that it is. <laughs> so I was like, in the twenties, there's no way that was a thing because this is like a thing that existed in my lifetime. So it must be referencing something else. And so yeah, it was, but <laughs> just very jarring. Um, but yeah. So anyway. Just I we had to talk about it. It was, it was very bizarre. <laughs> um, but yeah. But next week will we be doing a movie that's a little bit more recent, <laughs> Melissa? That won't. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. On our on our search for horror thriller movies that involve yeah. blind folks uh, for the month of October, because we thought we'd try and be spoopy. Yeah. So we we are watching Blink from 1994. So not Blink 182, which is what Google wants to keep giving me. Blink 1984. <laughs> no, luckily it's not from or 19... 1994. Sorry, <laughs> it would be really annoying if it was from 82. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You you would be impossible to find. Yeah, and they wouldn't have even known at the time. <laughs> was, um, Are you sure you don't mean insert name of Lincoln Park song here? Because I have no clue. Um, Lincoln Park or Blink 182? <laughs> See, okay. See, okay. So. I believe <laughs> in, in my head, in my weird brain, that Lincoln Park and Blink-182 are the same thing. Well, you know, in the end, it doesn't even matter, all these small things. Oh, my God, stop! <laughs> <laughs> I do know the difference, for the record. <laughs> I'm sure you do. And I also do have a record of Lincoln Park. Oh, my God, um, that's great. But yeah, Blink One Eighty Two isn't that isn't aren't they like uh, what's his name? Didn't they do the, the aliens? Didn't they do now? the 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 song "Numb"? I become no, so numb. That's is like that a them? Park. Is that <laughs> definitely like a park. okay? I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done. Is it okay if I don't edit all this out? No, Just, go for okay, it. Okay, great. Um, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. So <laughs> they're the same thing, but. If they're the same thing, Blink <laughs> from 1994 is a completely different thing. Yeah, we'll yeah, that's watching. that's the, that's different. We're, we're that's the movie we're watching next week. Yes, um, and we'll we'll see how scary it is. Boogie boogie boogie, It'll be fun. Um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll survive this this month of October. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not a horror film watcher generally, so I'm I'm excited to get more horror. Yay! Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Yes, awesome. Well, then I guess it's just our last thing, which um, I go first, which is sure, go for our, it. our blind aside. Mm-hmm. Um, so my um, my thing that I'm bringing this week is it's kind of like a little bit of a longer walk, sort of. But um, uh, it is something that I've been doing during the quarantine for a while now with my family every night um, since what else am I doing? Don't have shows or anything anymore. Um, I have been um, on a call with my family and we play Outburst. Um, and how the game works is you just have a list of 10 things um, and you... It, it, I think that the game because a lot of games will just not use if they have like a board will just grab the cards and not actually play the game for real but I don't even know if Outburst actually has a board or anything I think it is just meant to be just the cards um but we will but they have a category name 10 things and you have to guess everything on the card that is in that category and so there's like multiple different um there's like one there's like outbursts for kids and then there's like the adult version that i bought for the family and we were enjoying doing but like we ran out of all of the different (laughs) cards for the different versions because we've been doing this for way too long so now we've started like writing our own cards and it's been a lot of fun um and and uh my mom and i have been like my mom went on a series of doing uh like one word movies that um were that started with different where the words started with different letters so she's done multiple cards with that um and those of those are really fun and I like have been one of the ones I did recently was sexist microaggressions oh, <laughs> oh my god because they That's were all fantastic. written by men for the other one so I was so we're like we got to inject some feminism into this um but but it's just been a lot of fun and and it's also like if you do do it with your family or friends you can write your own 10 word things and get them to guess and you really don't have to spend any money so it's like a fun way to be a free fun so it's been 
yeah, I just I really enjoyed that. So that is what I'm bringing to the table today. I love it. That sounds awesome. That's we, I played Jackbox games with my improv troupe last night. Oh wait, Jackbox games. What is that? So there are these, uh, there are these g- games that you purchase a, a pack of them on the internet. Okay. And then you have you, whatever device you're watching them on, like a iPad or I used my laptop last night. And then you have your input device, which is your game player piece which is on your phone or on your iPad, whatever device you want to have it on. Right. And then there are different games that you can play. So the first game we played was like Murder Trivia Party. Oh. So you have to answer trivia questions, and then uh, if you get it wrong, you die, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. It's really fun. That's and, cool. Um, and then we played Joke Boat, which is one of my favorites. And that is uh, everyone enters in a bunch of categories. It'll ask you for a proper noun or a, a plural of something. And you enter them in. And then you have to write jokes. Oh. Uh, and then you the uh, the audience votes on like what jokes they like the best. You know, stuff like that. And um, quiplash is kind of the same thing. It's you're making quips. And then the audience votes on whichever quip they like the best. Oh, so that's cool. So just fun little like word games yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like sim- that is in a similar vein. Like it's yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. That's why when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I, we do this a similar thing. Yeah, um, that's cool. So Jackbox games are awesome if you if you're looking for something really fun to do with people. They're great over Zoom. They're fantastic over Zoom. Actually, they're a lot of fun. Uh, but that's actually not what I brought. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but just, yeah, next it's, it's a bonus. Uh, <laughs> what I what I brought was so I. Um, uh, as you know, I am very picky about the anime that I watch. I don't I don't watch a lot of anime, not because I don't like anime, but there's just so much. And I don't know where to start. And it's That's overwhelming. Yeah. And it's not all uh, quality. It's not all dubbed. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a problem. So, I have yeah. Too. So there's a problem. But um, uh, a friend recommended uh, the series called Madoka Magica on Netflix. Uh, and it's, it's, it's streaming on Netflix and it's subbed and dubbed. Nice. Yeah. Thank goodness. And the dub is actually really good. Nice. And it's really cool if you love Sailor Moon and uh, anime of that ilk. It is in the magical girl genre, but this one feels a little bit more mature, a little bit Aww. more dark. Um, it's it's the but it's still the same themes of like love and friendship and you Aww. know fighting big old monsters. Uh, oh, and they get cool costumes. The, the girls do, and they they fight these things. They fight witches basically. Nice, um, but it's. I don't want to say much because I don't want to spoil a lot of it, but it, it turns a lot of the magical girl tropes on its on their heads. That's cool. So it's just it's really different, and the ending is is uh, actually pretty satisfying. Nice. That's always so, good. Is yeah. it like um, how many episodes is it? It's like twelve. You okay. Can, I binged it in two days. Nice. Honestly, you can you can just it goes it goes by really fast. That's that sounds really cool. That's uh, Madoka Magica on Netflix. Awesome. Did we do another episode? I think we did it. I'm always. I think we did. Every yeah, time. we did it. This is my bit for a while. Is that I'll be surprised every time, and then I'll then I'll come up with a perfect. Um, okay, our theme song is by Lucia Fasano. Um, our YouTube channel is Citizen White Cane Podcast, where you can turn on the closed captions to um, get transcripts of the episodes. Our Twitter is White Cane Pod. Our Instagram is Citizen White Cane. Our Facebook is at Citizen White Cane. You can send us an email to Citizen pond at gmail.com and um, if you would like to leave a voice message for the show um, what is a now problematic uh, dog name that you had as it gave a dog <laughs> uh, who is your favorite version of the Joker actually there's a lot of them out there yeah <laughs> um, and have you ever tried to kiss someone um, who is permanently smiling and tell us how that's like. Um, you could do tell us about all those things. Um, there's a link in the show notes to leave us a voice message, um, and come back next week for Blink. Mm-hmm. And it is not the Doctor Who episode. No, although I would love to talk about the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can put I mean we talked about the Joker a lot in this one so we'll, we'll find a way <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but to tune in to find out okay <laughs> bye bye citizen sticks the blade in my mouth let's put a smile on that face and why so serious